So basically, um, Neva does this wonderful um, swap every year, and I always have collected zines and zines are micro published little teeny magazines this is part of my collection i have hundreds and hundreds i've, I've never counted them and i add a lot at a time uh, because they're so cheap so if i go to a zine festival or see a zine or comic book fair i i will either have a table there for my own zines or i will definitely shop because a lot of these things never make it to the web um, because they're making 20 to maybe 100 of them at Staples or on their home printers. They're real low key. They're anywhere from a dollar to five dollars. Oh. Um, they're just little teeny, spontaneous, little self-published magazines, or what people refer to them as zines for short. And zines have been around for quite a while and zines are coming back stronger than ever. I think that like a lot of things, there's fashion, you know, they kind of come and go. But ever since um, notions of diversity and um, self agency and personal narrative have been more of, you know, sounding horns for people these days. And I think that young, young people, um, high schoolers, we do some outreach with teenager, like middle school all the way up. But I think that there's a whole lot of interest in letting your freak flag fly with a little crazy miniature magazine, and it can be whatever you want. So here you're looking at some that um, I got recently at one show that was an artist book show, but zine people do um, kind of slip into that genre as well. Uh -huh. So in the top corner, you're seeing a really interesting one that has pop-up features. And in this yeah. case, real eyelashes have been added on. You can see that little pop-up, uh -huh. but it's still just a very simple, straightforward, uh -huh. yeah. handmade little single sheet that's folded up and that's it. Huh. But it's super creative. Um, you can do half paper, like a regular eight and a half by 11 and just fold it in half. So um, know that you have your power and value. This is, um, if you notice this Faith Harper has a whole lot of initials after her name. So she is like a therapist who's decided that to reach her audience, which might be, I'm not sure, you know, what her audience is, but I would imagine it's some people that are having trouble getting through and having insecurities, maybe bad self-esteem or low body image. It's got this positivity thing. It taps into superpowers and comic book feelings, um, but it's probably got some pretty sophisticated, well-scienced backed psychiatry behind its fun. Mm. Um, so they can be nothing, they can be something, but they're usually done pretty quickly. They're usually done very cheaply and everybody has their own little shtick. Mm. But you can see here in the middle um, section here, there's several, there's three in a row from the New York Times Magazine. And this person calls his series, the New York Times Magazine Found Poems. And they put, he puts the, the date of the issue on the cover and it's a whole lot of collage, mixed media work. So it's very spontaneous. Um, and it happens on a Sunday, probably during coffee, you know? So flipping through the New York Times Magazine and clipping out, creating poetic, like magnetic poetry on your, your kitchen refrigerator. And then it becomes some collage work as well. And, it goes to the Xerox machine and that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you fold them up, you know, and um, really great series. This, this guy has got like 40 or 50 different volumes from quite wow. a long time period. You get some that have colored, you get some that are all black and white. You get people who shift up and do little bits of stitching like this little thoughts book. It's just paper folded in half mm -hmm. and a pamp, what's called a pamphlet stitch, which is three holes and just a very simple, quick um, chain stitch going through there. The top 10 ugliest babies is on ledger sheets. So instead of being the smaller size that you see with the others, it is a little bit bigger. And I like to do those too. So you'll be seeing some of that in my, my work here in a little bit, but just hilarious little illustrations of literally ugly babies. Um, huh. 
every page an ugly baby <laughs> um, it's really weird you know it's like i wonder what motivates someone to do that so it does beg the question like i wish maybe there was some text involved <laughs> to understand, yeah. like, like did this person feel funny about their own baby did they feel that they were an ugly baby like what exactly <laughs> um is going on with that we don't really know in a pickle is just a folded up single sheet into like an accordion shape of pickles and then sliced pickles so it's like a repeating image nothing hmm. else that's it huh. the pickles so you can see you can go pretty straightforward there does seem to be categories of people that are lonely and wanting to share kind of like reaching out of their depressions. So there's a lot of the struggle against body image issues, mental health issues, grief, there's depth zines that are take interest in looks at feelings about somebody who passed away. There's a whole lot of political genre. There's a lot mm -hmm. of humor. In the humor, there's an enormous selection of animal things, predominantly <laughs> cat. Uh -huh. I did get this recent one called Proper Poodle Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just little teeny silly quick drawings of a poodle. And at the very end, it, um, it poos. Uh, in, one, in one of the pages it farts and on the end one it actually poops uh, and it's like watch out you know watch out for the poop because it doesn't uh, but it's just little silly you know little poodle drawings you know wonderful um the orange book in the middle is super chunky and zero uh, uh, just um ripped out pages of magazines a xerox cover so it's actually torn magazine pages and it's similar in concept, I think, a lot to the New York Times Magazine Found Poems, except for it's in a visual concept. Um, it's somebody who is really doing singles every single day of their lives with junk mail and um, different kinds of magazines other than Vogue kind of magazines. It's more like US News and World Report or Time or something like that. So there's politics and textures, maybe some architectural digest magazines, I want to say, and then just a lot of things that are just text that, you know, really, because they're turned in different directions, as the text is on his covers, it's hard to get a handle on exactly what he's trying to say. But I think the manicness of this wave of printed material that comes at us is something in his mindset but I'm not 100% sure because again, a lot of this stuff is just put out there. The interesting thing of his work is each one is original torn altered book pages, you know, right out of content. So there's not any Xeroxing other than on the cover. So mm. each one is unique. Yeah, wow. Which for four or $5 is pretty crazy to me. But maybe he's sitting there tearing up his junk mail thinking, ha ha ha, I'm gonna make $4 off of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the whole thing. It's all in the eye of the beholder. And that's one of the things I like about these is they don't have to tell you the whole story to really tweak you and make you find it interesting. Uh -huh. There are a lot of people who have professional careers like the you and me with the semi brush work. This is a calligraphy artist's work that takes it into something a little bit more like text. It's it's starting off as brush strokes, and then you're starting to feel like maybe it's actually text that I'm looking at. Um, so it's kind of fascinating um, to see what kind of work people come up with. Yeah, so that gives you a good sense of it. Uh -huh. um, I enjoy making my own. I have a series that I've got my third one I'm in the middle of right now for this year's swap, which is due on September the 15th. So we got to get get cracking if we're going to do our member swap. Okay, so steps to abstraction is a piece that I've done um, two for previous years. Um, the first one was uh, steps, um, steps to abstraction abstraction Vajunyan edition, which was my actual main zine is called Vajunyan. Vajunyan is um, either illustrations of desiccated onions, or they're actually like real, like up in the top of this one, up here at the top of the frame, um, you're seeing a photograph, black and white photograph of a dried red onion slice 
and they do become quite feminist and a little scary. And <laughs> Zen people love to do things that kind of make people go, what? And so Virginia has worked for me. Her mm -hmm. tagline is, she'll make you cry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love it. Because, uh, you know, onions do that to you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so zine people are also into patches, t-shirts. They want merch. They want stickers and buttons. So I've started to also um, sell that as well. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. The other motif I go with is mushrooms because I'm a shiitake mushroom farmer. I have like 13 still out of 33 you have to redo your logs every so often yeah mushrooms like consume them and i i went from 33 to 13 this year so i'm it's time to start another batch i'm into shiitake mushrooms and references to them i have a good friend who is with us today as well carolyn um who does enzos and kind of hit me to doing enzos which oh. are this meditative japanese brush technique right. of circles and it just went into mushroom caps and gills right away and so i do i do have multiples of mushroom related zines and then i have some funny feminist ones like you see the word merkin back here merkin um, i call them the illustrated guide series because they're usually funny words that people don't know or have a whole lot of different meanings so there's merkin and there's scat. Um, scat is obviously animal poop and <laughs> a musical vocalization, uh, vocal um, thing yep. of scatting. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole lot of other scats that people probably aren't aware of. So it's like a little informational illustrative thing. And I do repetitive fonts and repetitive layouts. It makes it happen faster the next time, but it also creates a sense of like a theme or a brand, if you will. Um, because, you know, you got to get it out there. Mm -hmm. This year's zinc, zine um, swap is may or may not be. I just made this guy in, in the spring, the points of connection. It came out of the lines, the radial lines that kind of happen with my mushrooms. And even though it's not a mushroom zine, it's more of a America racial relations kind of and family and lack being isolated and trying to reach out and there's a whole lot of levels to like why i wanted to make it it's a reverse it's two-sided so we'll you'll get to see that here a little bit more in just a second this past year i made these are that ledger size index woman is a series of two-sided each is a decade i'm 55 each is a decade of my like growth as a woman so to speak um they're they're just mixed media kind of visual grants and there's drawing just tons of stuff image transfers it's just a crazy collage that ended up getting high resolution scanned and then printed both sides in color at staples on the cell service um yeah yeah you got to get friendly with your staples if you're going to be a zaner uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Okay, so this is points of the connections. And you can see that I folded one in one direction and one in the other. I did a black sheet of paper with a white pen. So the black version on the right was the first first version. And then I just scanned and inversed it in Photoshop. Oh. Um, here's just some details. So you can see it's literally ink drawing. It's just mm -hmm. really quick, hand done ink drawing, just really fun super quick let it be what it is Just let it feel good i love the fact that you can pose this mm -hmm. particular structure is our structure that we're swapping so we don't just let people have a free-for-all we want it to be a set in the end where we're all the same dimensions oh. so we're doing what's called the ox plow um it's also called the hot dog the hamburger or mm. the double center cut accordion i know that's confusing but sometimes book structures have multiple names because um i don't know why exactly because there never had been any standardization you know i come out of photo initially and photo back in the uh, at the beginning of photography's innovation the world fair was an instrumental part in it 
in a lot of innovation for many, many, many centuries, decades and decades. And now it's been a long time since you really see like a world, a world's fair being like a big deal. I mean, mm-hmm. it used to be that everybody really wanted to hear like what the new inventions were and like what's really going on. And inventors would come together and that's how they would decide to have a society and set of standards like they did in photography. A lot of manufacturing has standards because of that too. Yeah, well, anyway, um, I think it's good to have a consistent look. And when you go to Staples, you get this deep black that you're not gonna get on your home printer. Um, oh. So I still recommend a Xerox instead of going fancy oh. because fancy isn't always better. And this- Yeah, and I put my information and a website on it. And I think that that's something a lot of people who start zines forget. You could do that in the original with before you go Xerox it, or you could take it into Photoshop or some other project, uh, you know, some other kind of program and add that text there. Okay. And is this the one, it's one piece of paper and you fold it for oh, it's time? just a single sheet of paper, which you can right. see right here. Right. That it's and so you have four squares and then it's just in half. Yeah. And then you we're going to go through the instructions in just a second. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. Oh, totally. <laughs> cool. No worries. No worries. Um, yeah. So lots of fun for the zanes. Let me uh, take us out of that. Okay. So talking about this idea of how do we make zanes and where do you get inspiration from? I really find that if you're new to it, it might be best to start with instead of starting with a blank page, to start with a texture. Mm. Um, just to take some of the designing out of the mix and get you a little farther. So if you can envision folding this half into a long strip and then into fours, okay? So that gets halved and then half again. You know, that middle center area is where the fold's gonna be. And all these textures are just kind of interesting. And in black and white, they're still gonna be interesting. And it says nothing it says nothing. It just helps your design be a little more interesting before you start adding, like, what is this scene about? So pure, just taking texture. It can be as simple as a wall. Interesting wall, obviously, would be nice. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of paper marbling. I'm known as a marbler. So taking an image for me like this that already gives me a sense of there's a center you know, because this does have a set, this is this design that you're making is going to have a center. But what if this became black and white or really light or you make it more intense and you just fold it up, you know, boom, and then work into it. So maybe working into these pages after you fold your texture up and just make a quick black and white print and see what you think of your texture that you took with your iPhone or whatever it is, you know? Um, take a textured object to the Xerox machine to start with, and then take that sheet and work into it. Take markers to it, rubber stamp pads, you know, actually print directly on it. Like if it's a Xerox copy, it should go through your printer, right? Um, So you could do a design in Photoshop or do like a Word document, which I don't really recommend because you can't flip the orientations, which we want in a minute, you'll, you'll understand that better. But finding some kind of pattern that exists that can be a background is a great way to trigger a zine. Now, it could be a zine about nothing. It could be an abstract, just really beautiful, interesting graphics. Mm-hmm. You know, it can have just a couple of words to help steer a conceptualization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This to me, when I look at this, this this is because of my wheelhouse. I see thunder thighs, like stretch marks, and the legs are coming together, uh, you know, yeah. like two thighs squished together. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so who knows? We might have a birth of the zine after after this Zoom meeting. <laughs> it could be something literal, mm, uh-huh. but literal objects are charged. This is a brick wall. It's actually a walkway, but it could be a brick wall in your head. It could be, it could be a walkway in your head, but it could be something sinister easily. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to force you into an aggressive zine posture, but you know what I'm saying is we're trying to look for contexts that could be something in the background that just 
takes is like having that blank page when you're trying to write, True. having some kind of simplified textural kind of concept. Think about it in black and white. And it, this has a lot of interesting opportunities for tipping on little things. And when you fold it up and you know where those little things are going to sit, then you can start designing it. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. It could be as simple as um, I have a lot of things open. My computer's moving slowly. When I was marbling, I sat a comb down on the paper. And that's a stain from the marbling solution. But that also fold it in half maybe you flip it on itself and repeat it on the bottom you know like you take a xerox cut off the piece you want lay it onto this xerox and then xerox them again yeah. and you could have boom some kind of interesting like what the heck is it experience and go from there so that's the quickest easiest way to start a zine that is about nothing or an abstract idea or you react to later into it into something okay mm -hmm. so there's no you know crazy hard line about what zines how zines are made hmm. so i'm trying to get you to be inspired to get out there and make some cool zines yeah okay so we're over here next what i was going to do is i was going to take us through the backstory of how the swap got done and this is also where your downloadable pdf is so you need to know how to get to it so we go onto our website into the blog section and way back in time you have to go down to the bottom and keep going backwards till you find this here's the original zine swap okay this is our results and what we do is our membership we decide who whoever turns them in um, we decide how big of a set it is right and then we do a custom housing that everybody also gets to have um, we have extra sets of these to give for donors that are over $100, and we do a whole lot of the loose individual ones for $2 each to sell at Zine fairs that Neba has boosts at occasionally. So it's nice to, to keep the project rolling. So I had made us uh, some fun stickers, and I came across um, what we needed to be able to make these lovely little pillow boxes for our set. And this Beautiful. is some of the just giving people ideas um, of how I'm just going to scroll mm -hmm. up a little okay. here. Okay. So here is Marie's name that she made for this year and hers was two sided as well. So that whenever it's two sided, I try to give a, a zine view to give you a sense of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's all in a name is a logo files meandering meditation on the world word Trump in Latin. Okay, so these are all words that are about Trump um, with a big T, but not exactly. Yeah. Little T, the word Trump, like, you know. Anyway, yeah. but it's some really wonderful graphic design quality where she's playing with the, um, the placements of these words to create letters as well, which is kind of nice. And the backside, if you print it on thin paper, you can have a feeling of the, she of the sheerness and see both at the same time, which is kind of interesting. Dennis Dahill is next here, and he did the coffee stains on a calendar blotter from his desk. Hmm. So he just folded it up and then interacted with it and picked his favorite areas. And then he wrote in right directly on the blotter before he Xeroxed his title, title and name and information. And then we put, he did the little, mm. I, I'm sure that he just scanned that and then tipped in our logo on it as well, which I think is a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He thought his ink, ink drops look like the coronavirus. I never, oh. I don't think I've actually read that little line there. How mm. interesting. Uh, um, Susan Gaylord is known as a calligrapher, so she chose a Ruth Azawa um, oh. quote to put on her pages. Yeah, it's just lovely. It was just very simple, mm -hmm. elegant and simple, very clean. Love that. And elegant and clean is exactly what I would say again here. Anya Gilmore's walls, it has a quote so she's reacting to a quote from someone as well um so that's not uncommon 
you like something and you want to react to it, which is sort of kind of the way these started originally. So in the 40s and 50s, you would have what was called a fanzine. Let's say you were obsessed with Rob Roy and you mm -hmm. couldn't get enough of him and you would take like the popular magazines and clip out little bits about Rob Roy and create your own little you know, I'm a fan of Rob Roy, and here's my little pamphlet, isn't it cool, I love Rob Roy so much. Um, that kind of thing really went around a lot, and it still does. It really still does. It's fascinating. Mm. Um, so here's Anya. Love her style with the grids. She's beautiful. Um, Rebecca Goodall, um, she did animal drawings, just a lot of fun, like, woodland animals for, from a local wildlife park. She lives up in Maine, that, that's in her wheelhouse, and it's super cute, you know, just real simple and lovely. Here is my Merkin one that I mentioned. So Merkins are pubic wigs. The Illustrated Guide series, the first page always has a dictionary-like entry that explains um, all the ideas. And then I have some funny other pages that go along with it. It's uh, just kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's a real uh, educational tool. <laughs> here is your steps to abstraction Virginian edition which is like a little bit of a sneaky feminist zine um so it's lots of secret uh vaginas hidden within a teacher since i am also an art teacher um <laughs> so i'm telling you how to take something that's simple and real from realism to abstraction by doing yeah. these different little sketches following the instructions so number four straight line becomes curve line curve line becomes straight. Mm -hmm. So you're taking this thing and then drawing it over and over again in quick sketches to reach an idea for how to abstract it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of an interesting how-to, which the how-to or nonfiction type um, genre for people is very common. And Carolyn, do you have uh, your, you want to unmute and explain these next two since you're here? Oh, I should also change my name. That's huh? okay. If you feel like you need to. Because I'm not Nora Rosenbaum. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm a painter and I have my, uh, one of my two body, main bodies of work are of sheep. I'm just in love with this particular breed of sheep and I decided my first scene should be my sheep. So I took various drawings and monotypes, um, mostly monotypes because I do them in one, one color of black I make up, but I have some charcoals. And um, I just, you know, may I title my zine sheep and, and I put the pictures together because that's what I love. I don't, really I don't. Sweet. I love them. People love animal zines. They just, just one, one of the animals. one of the most popular genres by far. And my second zine, um, I also paint interiors, interiors um, on site. And so my second zine was my interiors. Um, and that's that. That is it, it too was I thought because of you know it being 2020 and a lot of people did kind of lean into the pandemic ideas for the like the next one you're going to see as well but i thought the idea of home you know that peaceful home kind of quality was very relevant for the time so i thought it was perfect timing to see the interiors i loved it um, susan marsh she's our membership coordinator on our board and uh, very helpful and wonderful um signs of the time it just goes through and every page has that six foot <laughs> distance but made in animals <laughs> different animals so you see over here you got the two great pyrenees or what is it four beagles 18 chihuahuas and one dolphin but there i mean the whole zine that's all it is every page is how many like interesting like made up like signage oh it's so cute it's really wonderful. Alyssa's is um, her, her, she's in, she was in New York City during the lockdown. Her kind of visuals that she was seeing during, during her time and just loving on, yeah, 
Lebanon, New York, and how badly New York has taken its hit. This is her mom, Sarah. Um, her work is really cool too. I like these like silhouetted characters. She's done a whole lot with those over the years. I've seen others too that are really neat. I liked her work. And down here we have Gail Samuda. Again, this is one of my favorites as far as thinking about something that's extremely powerful and very little content. I mean, like hardly any content at all. Just blame and then something on every single page. Powerful, very powerful. Love her work. Alice Stan, she's well known as an illustrator as well as a bookmaker. Um, really good work here. This is just an apartment, an apartment complex with cats, just really fun. And again, cats are by far the most popular of the pet genres. This is a Stephanie Stigliano piece called Share the Water that she shared with her students um, as well. So this really gives you a sense of how to take that single sheet and do a, a different structure with it. Um, it's a little bit different than what we normally do. Uh, we might do it next year once we get a chance, but I did want people to understand how to make that zine. And so I give you the video here to learn how to do this one. It's cut in the center. So you cut down the center three, uh, three ways across, and then when it folds, it makes a continuous accordion um, with this little flap that you can look at in either direction. But it does change how it operates. Um, it, the dimensions when folded are the same, but it's just a little bit of a variation on the ox plow. And um, yeah, so I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to do that. So that's kind of fun to see to see the to go back in time and see that one. Um, I don't I haven't looked at those some of those in a while. On um, this past year's results were cool too. I don't think I've gotten everybody's statements the same way, which I need to push them on. But here you can see that we created a different box, and Susan Marsh was the one that did this box. So I did the first box. I'm not sure who's going to do the the third box, and we don't even know how many people. So we're not ready to really think on that yet, but we will need a volunteer for the box, which would be nice to get. Over here, standing up, you can see a little back view of our zine about zines, which is the actual how-to PDF of how to do it. And I'm pretty sure um, you can see here some more of last year's zines. So what we've been doing so far, and given the fact that we're New England book artists, and we really do have the membership that spans across New England, is that we will continue on with the digital version of a swap. So everybody will forward on by September 15th, their PDF version of their black and white eight and a half by 11. If it's two sided, obviously, it's you need to send both pages to me but we will have those posted to be distributed amongst all the swappers. So that'll be nice. And then Nebo will pick up the tab on the boxes once the boxes get made. And I would love to be able to do a physical swap. It depends on, I guess, where all the people who decide to do their zines are coming from and whether that's something we could think about trying to do in maybe October around um, a couple of these these swap event, uh, zine fest events that we are going to be experiencing. Maybe that might be the best strategy. So it's interesting. Um, perfection came up in two people's ideas or were centered on notions of perfection. So Nancer did a, an interesting zine that has a script across the top that runs throughout the zine and more of a cartoon on the bottom going on. So it's almost like there's two different things happening in her zine. It, it kind of makes it more interesting to follow it that way on some levels. Um, Marie staying with the politics. Um, I like I like her consistency. I like the look of it being consistent. So the Havana syndrome, if you're ever familiar with um, people being sick at some of our American embassies in, in, in Cuba over some kind of possible microwave and uh, it's some kind of terrorist type, unusual style of terrorist attack, possibly. So she's reflecting on that in her interesting uh, way with all the crazy fonts and the interesting graphic designs. 
Dennis, again, with another idea that's kind of interesting and out of the wheelhouse. So Dennis Dahill, this time he was in uh, COVID, uh, in Paris, rather, right before COVID. And he is merging and turning and fragmenting uh, sculptural views that he saw to kind of represent his feelings. So that's, I thought that was lovely. Here you're seeing Susan Gaylord's calligraphy again and her ideas on perfection. Anya Gilmore's Pakistani spice bag is an informational um, instruction booklet on how to actually fold up the spice bag and it's just stunningly done. Um, she's got the instructions running across the bottom. These interesting kind of Xerox feeling hand shots. I don't know. They're just lovely. The way they rendered is fantastic. I just, she always does something really nice. Here you're seeing a, double, a little bit more of the mushroom meditations that I did. Again, it's combining photographs and drawings. It's, it's combining what are called spore sprays. When you cut a mushroom cap and turn it gill side down on things, right as it's dying, that cutting triggers a spray of spores. It's like this last gasp that it puts out before it dies. And they're kind of interesting and haunting on some levels. So you're seeing some spore spray, some Enzo, that Japanese art and drawing and other things like collage together, just to make these interesting kind of meditative pieces. Here is the steps of abstraction for that year, which was light bulbs suspiciously organized to look like two breasts, um, or are they? What are they? Um, so you can see that like they're changing and becoming stranger by the minute. They're becoming like little uh, insects. They're, they're definitely odd. By the time it gets to the back, you're not sure what you're looking at, but that's kind of part of the fun. Here's Carolyn. You want to come back in and uh, give us a little hello here? Well, this Wait. is Leland. He's the, he's the guy I love the most in my life. And so I did a post on Waylon, a, a zine on Waylon, and I'm going to be doing another one. The, uh, the, my favorite parts, the best parts of Waylon. Excellent. That's, that's next. I tell you, the cat zine scene is huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. People He's are my so, fella and, and I- That's I, what you care about, man. That's what zines what are all about. about. He's, he's, that's it. It's all He's about the man. Waylon. He's the man. We love, we love Waylon. He makes uh, cameo appearances occasionally in some of the photos on our website. Yes. So he's like our mascot, sort of, but not really. But sort of. <laughs> so here's Susan Marsh's contribution. She did two, um, and you can do two, up to two, and you can do the two-sided if you want. And it's really wide open to like theme and ideas. So you're seeing here, she's, in lo she's loving on cyanotypes lately. So this is a, a really great history and look at and how to, um, again, this idea of do it yourself, the DIY kind of, not only aesthetics um, in the zine world, but in the topics, it's all about what you care about. Zines, zines don't need to be anything specific. It's what you want them to be about. Because zines yeah. don't care. Because zines don't care. That is, or, you know, Nancer, um, did part of our Girl Scout outreach project of this past year for the book arts patch, badge, not patch, I keep wanting to say patch. They call them badges. Um, well, anyway, um, Zines Don't Care was sort of a piece she wrote to kind of show them that Zines Don't Care if you got any money or not, because it's real cheap to make a zine, you know. Zines don't care if you're a man or a woman, if you're young, you're old, you're fat, you're thin, you're hairless, you're hairy. Um, you know, you have a cat, you have a dog, um, your sexual orientation is irrelevant. Um, none of this stuff, and the zines don't care. You can put whatever you want about whatever you want. You can hang it all out, just right in the middle of your zine and do what you need to do. And that's why zines are so beloved by like teens and up and coming like 20s, 20 year olds love them too, because it's like a rant. You know, they're just learning. I've learned this a long time ago. It feels good to like rant about something every once in a while. And 
a zine is a wonderful way to, to do that. And people are kamikaze with it, you know, they'll just print up a few at, you know, maybe like 20 at Staples and then leave them in random places just for free. You know, there's those little free libraries. We could kamikaze attack some of those libraries around. There's even a website that has all the addresses of all the registered little free libraries where we could find them all in our area and go like bomb them with a bunch of wonderful, crazy zines. Yeah. So her second one were, is things I've learned from my mother. And this is just really just some fun little tight strips of paper on top of collages that she had done. And then she threw like, you know, RGB at the end here, you know, you gotta give Ruth a little love here. And it ended up being probably one of my favorite scenes just graphically because of how cool it was and how cool, you know, or, you know how cool is she? And so we, I'm gonna go ahead and slide down here to the, Oh, I didn't put it in there, did I? Dang, I didn't put it in there. I was gonna do a picture of the earrings. We did little miniature zines, like teeny tiny ones. And we put um, a, a just this particular zine. And I put a little teeny bit of red, like marker on a few little areas to put a little extra bling into the, the movement of it. So they're like little teeny zine earrings, really popular. We were only selling them for a dollar each. And next time it's gonna be $2 because because they move so fast. Her mother is also one of our members. So Judy Patterson, so old. This is a zine about her 90th birthday party. And it's got um, pictures of her like in a golf cart with her boyfriend. She has a boyfriend like zooming along. She went and had cake and birthday. She did like a birthday jazzercise aerobic thing all with her water. What is it? It's water, water aerobics is what yeah. it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, with her girlfriends and it, just she just had a full day and so she made a zine about her 90th birthday gail samuda did a really fun kind of it's like a it's written like what do you call it when you have a screenplay i'm sorry i had a senior moment or not quite a senior but anyway it's like a screenplay and it's just funny it's like a little dialogue about uh, r wagner and b bunny it's just very curious Alice Stan, see, I haven't gotten all my quotes from everybody yet to put up here. So we will know more about these once these people tell us more about them. Alice Stan with her little illustrations. This one's totally charming. The cat apartment was fantastic too, but little spaces is like teeny tiny little illustrations that are really special. And each one is, is totally unique. So you're seeing here a teapot with the swimming pool on the side over there in the cup. Love that. Donna Stepien's minimal, Minimalist Menu. This is like her day in food, and it is very minimalist. <laughs> it's like, honey, you need to eat something. But really cool <laughs> pictures and then like a list. So it's kind of like, you know, documenting what she ate that day, which totally is right in the wheelhouse of the way social media works with people taking pictures of their food and showing what they had and where they went. Um, this kind of, you know, thing is very common. To do you know i mean well it's about you so why not you know here you're seeing a little bit more of the box again great love that okay so we gotta update this just gotta update that it'll happen it'll happen so if you come over here to our youtube channel so you can just go to YouTube or you can click on the bottom of any of our emails there's a little icon for this like YouTube symbol is will take you right to our channel. I've added that recently on the bottom of all emails. And here you can go back and look at all kinds of stuff. If you scroll down, you can see the recordings that I made of previous Zoom zine evening. So I did two last time. I'm going to be doing, um, did I do one at the very beginning too? No, I, this was prior to us starting to really do recordings. Okay, so the first one I didn't record. Um, but there are two videos here that have a, a deeper look at my collection, which would be kind of probably fun for you to see. So you might want to check that out. Here's another great resource that you might want to check out. And you might want to borrow my USB flash drive. Um, the Quarantine Public Library is the name of it. So quarantinepubliclibrary.com. It's a, a curated invitational by two ladies who decided to do this open sourced library. 
of zines during the quarantine. There's a little in the neighborhood of around 200 that are in this library. So when you go in here, you can browse by artist, media, or genre. Okay. And let's just pull one up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pick one that I like. Okay. So it takes an awful long time to see all 200 by poking around like I just did. Okay, but you can for free, go into each one individually and read about the person and then actually print. And if you have a color printer, you can do, because like half are in black and white and half are in color. You can actually print it from your home computer any old time, one at a time, which is a big hassle. Okay, or let me close that and go back to this. Or you can go into the donate area and you can give them 30 bucks and get one like of all of it, which helps. And I don't have a color printer that I like and I don't really ever use the one that I have. So it's not even hooked up and it's probably all dried out because I hate it so much. I just wanted to A, support them and B, make more than one copy and get a, get a whole set easier. So I went ahead and bought this. And I'm happy to lend my stick to anyone who wants to do this. But you do have to realize that if you really want the whole set and you actually go to print it all out, it's going to be in the neighborhood of $75 in Staples to print this all out. Because if you think of like 100 like black and white Xeroxes and 100 color Xeroxes, it ends up being quite expensive. So you may or may not want to borrow this from me, but it is available. The cool thing about this site is that they have the tutorial that I just absolutely think is fantastic. So let's just take a quick peek here. It doesn't take long. It's 45 seconds. You can see that this is pretty basic stuff. I mean, 45 seconds is no time to make a book. Boom. One cut through there makes that double slat. And there's your ox plow right in the middle. Wow. That fold up looked really, really swift. My fold ups never happen that fast. Like that little ally section. Wow. And you can watch it over and over again. But they also have this version. Okay. So you're seeing here that one, two, and three, and then it goes four, five, six, seven, and then eight's over here again. So you have to be able to change orientation if you're trying to design this, Illustrator, Photoshop, any more advanced program over like a Word document program, because I don't think it lets you do it that way. But let's say you don't have the ability to go into Photoshop. You could make a Word document for the eight, one, two, three, and you can make a Word document for the four, five, six, seven, and print both pages on the same side of one page. Now that's a little bit complicated and a little bit more of a stinker to I'll do your alignment probably. But if you don't have the ability to have Photoshop Illustrator or some project, you know, some kind of software that's going to let you move things around easily, then that's going to be the best strategy. Or Boom, just make it, go scan, go to, go to Staples and just Xerox one after it's really done and take a photo of it with your cell phone and send it to me, like nice and even clear photo. And I can make a PDF for you if you can't figure any of this out. So there's no, like, you know, you can do it all and be totally amazing and get it right and have the alignment perfect the way you want it. Or you can go super low tech and not have any technological, you know, understanding at all. So there's that full range here, which is nice. Excellent. This really does cover the whole thing and it even has it written out. The template, their templates you can download from right here as well. And then there's probably some interesting, you know, just cruising around is going to give you interesting ideas and looking at these people by artist, by genre, 
Um, by genre, the thing that I think is most common is for people to do images, some kind of image related content. Um, so you're seeing a lot of drawing, you're seeing watercolor and markers, photos. You could do printmaking, you know, like you could do a carved styrofoam block or a linoleum print to mass produce it, you know, to really, um, or I don't think you really need to do printmaking because you're going to be Xeroxing this. So it's the original is all you really need to do. Look at this guy, make it stand out with the butt cheeks on that guy with all the weird like fetus baby thing on the side. I wonder what that one's about. I haven't printed that one yet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so fun. So this will give you a really good sense of what's going on. Okay, so once we get to the point of having all of our zines, again, we already have pretty much so a whole lot printed and everything ready to roll. We're going to go get another table at the Watertown Zine Fest.